In India, a preference for male babies has created a severe gender imbalance. The shortage of women has led traffickers to sell young girls to men desperate to marry. I'm Steve Chow. On this edition of 101 East, we investigate India's slave bride trade, where few women live happily ever after. It's late afternoon, and a group of village women share their woes. They're drawn together by a mutual and unfortunate bond. All of them were trafficked into marriage. Their stories echo each other's tragic lives. The plight of these women is all too common in one of India's most feudal and patriarchal states. A preference for male babies has delivered Haryana the worst gender ratio in the country. It's not just about sex selection and feticide. It's about infanticide. It's about lack of value for girls. It's a continuum where girls are not valued before they're born, but the girls are not valued and treated well even after they're born. A government advisor on family issues, Poonam Matreja, says with a shortage of women to marry, it's become normal in Haryana for men to buy brides from other states. Yes, they could marry their boys to girls from other parts of the country in the normal respectful way, but it is their extreme lack of respect for women that they do sex uh, trafficking, I would call it. And the women that they bring in, it's not as though they treat them as respected married partners. They treat them as commodities that can be recycled and resold. A survey of 10,000 households in Haryana found more than 9,000 married women had come from other states. In most villages, we're told there are around 5 to 10 women who have been trafficked into marriage. Some have been sold to men not just once, but two or three times. The villagers call them paros, a derogatory term implying they've been purchased. All people in Haryana are disrespectful towards women like us. Everybody says we have no self-respect, that we are sold like cows and goats. We feel very bad when we hear all this, because we are human beings and we belong to India, just like them. Sanjeeda was trafficked to Haryana when she was just 10. From a large family in the northeastern state of Assam, she says an older girl from a nearby village who she met while playing drugged and kidnapped her. I was made to do field work, cut grass, feed cows, do all the work. I cried for a year. I was in captivity for four years. Her captors, she said, then sold her into marriage. I couldn't run away or bring my life to an end. There was nobody whom I could ask for help. When Sanjita's father finally found her, it was too late. She was already three months pregnant. I was sleeping. And I heard a voice like my father's calling out for me. He told me that he had come to take me home. But I couldn't leave. 
He stayed for two months to watch how they treated me. This is the man she was married off to. I was aging and my parents said to me that I wouldn't be able to get married here. Poor men cannot find a girl to marry. That's why we go elsewhere. Whether his parents paid money for his bride is a family secret. I don't know much, nor will they tell me. No parents divulge such things, as it will lead to unnecessary fighting. Fourteen years later, Sanjida and her husband have four children, two sons and two daughters. Sanjida is one of the luckier ones when it comes to women who have been trafficked. Her new family has treated her kindly. But she's determined to help others and now works for a local NGO to empower trafficked women. Today she's attending court with a girl who was recently rescued. Only three when her parents died. Maklisha says she was trafficked by the aunt who raised her. At just 12, she was sold to a man in his 70s. He fathered her 18-month-old daughter. But after three years of marriage, he died, and Moklesha was sold once again, this time to a man who subjected her to horrific abuse. Sanjida is helping Moklesha prepare her evidence. But it's not easy. Her second husband was so cruel. He beat her so badly that her mouth was damaged and she was affected mentally. She struggles to speak and to be understood. How she came to be sold a second time is still a mystery. Her first husband had two fields, so she and her daughter should have been provided for after he died. But that's rarely the lot of trafficked women. I am yet to see a case that they have legally inherited some land in their name. They are not accepted as such the member of their family. Narendra Singh is the local district chief magistrate. Addressing a public meeting on legal rights, he's a strong advocate for traffic brides and says illiteracy and language barriers make it almost impossible for these fragile women to get justice. She is brought before the court to depose against the trafficker, who is a powerful person who has uh, so much link in the community and the community is supporting him. So in these circumstances, it's very tough for that lady to stand by her statement. With her trafficker on the run, Maklisha and her daughter are living under police protection in a safe house. She was three months pregnant when she was rescued. With the help of police, she was able to tell the court she wanted an abortion. But still so traumatised, she's unable to tell anyone where she's from. At times she starts crying and she's full of anger. She won't even talk or eat anything. But when it seems she may be in the mood to divulge information, then I start asking her questions. But I feel I'm not having much success. Today, though, the police are hoping for a breakthrough in her case. We're with the police and we're on the way to Moklisha's husband's house. It's almost two months since she was rescued and this is the first attempt the police have made to arrest him. The inspector of the local women's police leads the way to a village in search of the violent second husband. She's in no mood to waste time. The first person she confronts is the man's mother. Her line of questioning turns to whether Moklisha's husband broke the law and bought her from a trafficker. 
नजीर ने ढाणा वाले को कितने पैसे दिए ना दिया ना दिए नहीं दिए तो फिर भाग क्यों रहा है Even though there's no arrest, all is not lost. The inspector has new information. पहली बीवी थी जो उसको चार बच्चों को छोड़ के कहीं दूसरी जगह चली गई और इसीलिए इसने मुखलिसा को लेके आया था उसकी बूढ़ी माँ है उससे हम पूछ रहे हैं वो बता रही है कि कहीं राजस्थान में मुझे जगह का नाम नहीं पता वारंट इशू करा लेंगे कोर्ट से उसको गिरफ्तार करने की पूरी कोशिश करेंगे जहाँ भी मिलेगा Back on the road, and this time the police are in pursuit of the trafficker and hope to catch him by surprise at home. Seems the trafficker has bolted. Tipped off by villagers, he's managed to slip away. His sister-in-law, who brought Maklisha from Haryana, is left to answer for him. Why did you sell her to her husband? The woman tells us Maklisha ran away from her first husband's house after he died because she feared her sister-in-law. <laughs> Many of the girls who have ended up in Haryana started their lives here in the far northeastern state of Assam. Almost 2,000 kilometers away from Haryana, it's another world with a different landscape, language and culture. One of the poorest regions in India, a third of its population lives below the poverty line. The mighty Brahmaputra River provides rich land for crops but it's prone to catastrophic flooding. Many girls and women who are procured for marriage come from farms on this floodplain. When the monsoons come, the land is submerged, the river changes direction, and families are displaced, making them vulnerable to traffickers. You can imagine, when the land is gone, they have nothing. A little ray of hope, like some financial help, financial assistant that will provide their daughter a job. In that case, they easily agreed to the traffickers' offers. And this way, they found a weak point to the, uh, for the parents, and they attacked in this point. This way, trafficking is happening. Noor Muhammad is a social worker with a local anti-trafficking NGO. We are working here since 2010, and in my career, I have, uh, I have been at least to 100 rescue missions. Wow. Today, he's taking me to meet a mother whose daughter was trafficked. They are very poor people, and uh, I think uh, they have no land uh, except their home, because her father died last year. After uh, the death of her father, she was trafficked. This is the house. She, she is the mother of that girl. She just wants her daughter back to home. And she will be happy. Majida's daughter went missing a year ago, when she was 16. She was home alone studying for her school exams when she went to the shop to buy a notebook and never returned. We asked around, but no one had heard anything. I didn't know what to do. I was helpless. There was no hope. There was no solution. I just prayed one day I would see her. A couple of months later, her daughter phoned and told her mother she was in Haryana. I asked her where exactly she was and how she got there, but she didn't know anything. 
All she said was, you come and I will go with you. I went to the police station to lodge a complaint, but the officer told me to give them around $700. Without the funds and with three young children to look after, she was helpless. And then came more news. Her daughter was married. I wanted my daughter to study and then get married. She had never failed an exam and she had a bright future. Majida now has limited phone contact with her daughter. She cannot call me alone. Her husband or his brother are always present. Hello? Hello? But today the network is congested and she's unable to get through. My daughter asked me to come and fetch her, but how? I asked her to come here with her husband, but she says it's impossible. All my hopes are crushed. I just hope I see her again before I die. Majida is not alone. In a village nearby, an older couple live in hope of finding their daughter one day. She was 13 when she disappeared six years ago and has not been heard of since. They believe the trafficker lives in their midst. The couple say they have spent close to $2,000 searching the whole of Assam for their daughter. They're clearly heartbroken and say they will never give up hope of finding her. Not far from the couple, a 14-year-old girl is one of the fortunate few to be found. She was trafficked six months ago when she and her sister were persuaded to run away with a man who said he was in love with her sister. Nowadays, this is a common trick to uh, traffic girls to pretend uh, having love with a girl. And uh, uh, in this method, girl can, uh, once having love with a boy, the girl easily agrees to run out from the home uh, to go somewhere and get married. She was right to be scared. She and her sister were taken to Haryana, separated and sold into marriage. She's now back in her village living with her grandmother while her parents work thousands of kilometres away in New Delhi. Her family, her village accepted her very well. Some victim family, they are not accept their daughter after rescuing. I think this is notion of honor. What uh, the people will gossip. Uh, some, some fam it matters to some families. Being accepted is one thing, but it will take a long time for the trauma to fade away. For Mother Majida, the opportunity has finally come for her to travel to Haryana to try and find her daughter. Noor has prepared the necessary documents for the Haryana police. This is a police verification letter. 
here everything is included about the case so no this yes yes it will it will very helpful for you in this last moment it's a mammoth journey ahead for Majida, even with her brother alongside her. She's never been more than 10 kilometers from her village or traveled in a car, let alone a bus or a plane. But her focus never shifts. The next day, the rescue mission is in full swing. <laughs> The police know Majida's daughter is living in this area, but are not sure exactly where. Villagers lead us to her apartment. She seems excited to see her mother after so long. It's a gut-wrenching reunion, but it's about to take an unexpected turn. Majida's daughter is not happy with her mother. When her husband arrives, the police interrogate him. शादी करवा ली थी मैंने इसके साथ मैंने पूछी भी थी मगर तू मेरे साथ राजी है महाराज जी अच्छा तो ये लड़की ने आपको कहा था मैं आपके साथ रहना चाहती हूं ठीक है the husband says he met his wife at a railway station when a man and a woman who claimed they were her uncle and aunt asked him if he wanted to marry her ये तो सुधार जी मेरे को जी आपके ना तो ये बहुत पागल और थी पता नहीं इसको कहां छोड़ते हूं his wife confirms the couple trafficked her from Assam. The husband denies money changed hands, but police say he told them he paid around $40 to the couple for expenses. Photographs taken on their wedding day confirm their union. With the police satisfied that no action is needed, the husband tries to make his mother-in-law feel welcome, even kissing her feet. His wife is clearly torn between him and her mother. As the sun goes down, Majida's too distressed to talk devastated that she has to leave her daughter behind. Traffic from other states and bought and sold into marriage. These women never stop yearning to return home. I miss everything about Assam. But even though I want to go back, I have no place to go. Alone and vulnerable, they're trapped in lives of endless abuse and slavery. The Indian government is drafting the country's first ever comprehensive anti-trafficking laws. But will new laws be enough to stop women being sold into marriage? You know, making laws is a necessary condition for a society, 
but it's not sufficient. Unless you change social norms and the way people view girls, you're not going to be able to change either the sex ratios or the lack of respect for women. Buying brides is lack of respect for women and lack of any value that a woman has. For Sanjeeda, it's now all about her daughters. I don't expect much for myself, but I work hard to educate my daughters so that they have a better life. Whatever I went through, they should not have to suffer that. <laughs>